Global Buying today. We're having a great time with our attorneys. You guys are giving us amazing advice for the people that are calling. We have Concepcion on the phone. Uh, ano po yung tanong ninyo, Concepcion? Uh, oh, dahil ano, yung anak ko, immigrant. And then, oh. And, and then po? Okay, uh, immigrant siya. Pero nagka-stroke no, the last time he visited me here, I'm 83 years old. I like to see him. And uh, the last he visited is in 2011. Then he got a stroke in the Philippines. So how can he come back? Okay, so his, um, their child is an immigrant and they got a stroke when they were in the Philippines and they're asking, how can they return? Yeah, from an immigration standpoint, um, that would probably qualify as an exceptional circumstance to somebody staying longer outside the United States than is normally allowed. And uh, I, I think that the immigration service would allow him to come back at whatever time he was stable enough to, to fly. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's just a matter of whether they can work it out with the airlines and his doctors to allow him to fly. And, but I think documenting the, the obvi obviously extenuating circumstances that have caused him to remain in the Philippines probably longer than he intended uh, and that they should then let him back into the United States. Okay, so kailangan lang meron kayong mga dokumento na ipagpapatunay na nag, nag, nagkaroon nga ng stroke yung anak ninyo sa Pilipinas. Okay, we have our next caller on the phone mula sa Newport Beach. Josie, hello! Hello po. Tanong ko lang po. Uh, permanent resident card holder ako nung pinetisyon ko yung mga anak ko six years ago. Ngayon ho, citizen na ako. Ano ho yun? Automatic ho ba na malilipat yun sa ano, uh, nagpetisyon sa US citizen, yung status nila? At hanggang kailan ho ako maghihintay? Okay, yun, yun palagi yung tanong, gano katagal? The, the question is always, how long do I have to wait? So she uh, it was a green card holder and she petitioned her children. Now she is a citizen. Does that affect the time uh, that she has to wait? Yes, it certainly it, it does affect the time. And so the first part of her question is, does it automatically convert her petition right. to that of a U.S. citizen? Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, it does. Uh, the petition is automatically rolled over into that other category, which is known as F1 category. Okay. Um, the beauty, however, is that now you actually have the flexibility of going back and forth uh, between the F1 for U.S. citizens and the F2B for green card holders. And uh, you have the essential, f essentially the flexibility of, de of determining which one, whichever one is faster that's how your child can go ahead and move forward with the process to obtain the green card and come into the US and so right now the category for the green card holder is actually if you're outside the US it is actually faster still if you're just a green card holder they're at 2004 versus if you're a US citizen it's only at 2002 um, but that does change back and forth. And so only about six months ago, it was faster to be a U.S. citizen. And so, you know, the good part is it's good that you're a U.S. citizen. That's what you need to be. Now you're between the two categories. Um, sometimes one is faster than the other. Right now it's as a green card holder. She said she filed six years ago, so about 2009. So right now your waiting period may be roughly at about five more years. Five more years. Okay. Before you are reunified with your family. Kasama natin si Loretta on the phone. Loretta, ano pong tanong ninyo? Ang tanong ko po, ang kami lahat na nandito na US citizen kami lahat. All right, praise God. <laughs> yung That's great. Yung father ko namatay. Pinitation niya yung last sister ko na process na lahat. Inaantay na lang niya ho ang interview niya. Pagkatapos na uh, ng, ano namatay yung father ko, Tapos sabi, if the petitioner died, it will, the petition will die. So, ang ginawa namin, nag, nag, uh, sinulatan ko yung immigration, isinauli lahat ang papers namin dahil namatay na yung ano. Mag-isa lang yung kapatid kong naiwan sa Pilipinas that was 30 years ago. Okay, so the entire family is here, Richard, and the petitioner, which is their father, has passed away, but there is one sister that is left in the Philippines. And when she wrote to immigration, they said that to return all the document, uh, they returned all the documents. 
Uh, is there any way that her sister can be brought here to America? Uh, this is what we were talking about before, humanitarian reinstatement for petitions that have been automatically uh, revoked due to the death of the petitioner. Uh, and, and it is normal for the embassy to return the petition back to the National Visa Center when they find this out. So that's not abnormal. You can still apply for humanitarian reinstatement of that petition. It can still be granted mm -hmm. and the person can still come in. The fact that all the family is here, that she is the remaining sister, is a big factor in favor of granting that petition because one of the big things is family unity. Mm -hmm. uh, so they want to unify family. So th th it's a good case and they should make that case and try to get that petition uh, reinstated so that the sister can come here to the United States. Okay, and one, uh, one way that you can do this is obviously to make sure that you have the proper legal advice, and that's why Aquino and Lo, they're both here sharing their advice with you. Make sure that you consult someone that knows what they're doing, not just the paralegal or somebody that's giving advice. This is so important. We'll be right back here on Kababayan Today. Call us, 1-800-553-5724. Magbabalik kami.